My name is Ethan Tuning and I'm gay. My name is Jake and I am completely and utterly gay. I'm Osman and I'm gay. <laughs> I'm a transgendered female. I am a gay male. I am not positive what I am. My name is Josh Gruber and I am gay. I'm Patty and I'm queer. I'm a gay man. And I'm a lesbian. Like many of you, I'm gay too. I'm Jeff. I'm gay. I am straight male. And I am genderqueer, radical, two-spirit. And I want to let you know about my story of how I got better. So I grew up in Ellensburg, Washington. It's a small town in the middle of Washington State. And um, growing up gay there was difficult. I'm originally from Tucker, Georgia, and being gay felt like having a flashing sign over my head that made me different from everyone else. So I didn't really have any idea of what it was like to be queer, I just thought I was having a bunch of really weird friendships. When I was growing up, I didn't know anyone who was gay. My parents kind of always anticipated my being gay. I was always so afraid of just getting bullied of what people would think. I would come waltzing into the kitchen wearing this red velvet gunny sack that my sister had, pretending to be Mary Poppins. In my high school there weren't any queer people, there were no out queer people. I was the only dyke at my high school, which was really interesting. I think the hardest part for me overall was just like not being able to talk to anybody about it. Gay people to me were kind of mysterious and scary and <laughs> they, uh, I had this idea that they were kind of, there's something sinister about them and creepy. There wasn't a lot of uh, role models, so the teasing was uh, was really bad. I got bullied, I got picked on, I was called like, you know, a fag and stuff like that. Faggot or homo or queer, fudge packer and faggot. From the time I started kindergarten until I was about 17 years old, I was called faggot. That was my name at school. Sometimes you get called a wuss or a, uh, a pussy and those words really, you know, um, hit home and they would, uh, had a lot of impact on me and I'd always try really hard to to play against those words and to try to be as tough as I could be or as normal as I could be. A couple of big um, kind of redneck guys got off the truck that they were driving in and just started beating me up, punching me in the mouth and in the face, busting my lips and my eyes and um, and I, and I didn't know what, why. It just like, it was all of a sudden and they kept calling me a faggot. It was a struggle at first because a lot of people were kind of pointing that at me and being like, hey, you're a dyke, you're this, you're that. I experienced what, what, what it's known as gay bashing and I, I wasn't aware of it. I was just, you know, I was 14 at the time. It worried me so bad and hurt me so bad I'd throw up. I became obsessive compulsive. I pulled out my hair. Then I became suicidal. I ended up, uh, resourcing to drugs and alcohol, which is, uh, which made things a lot worse for me. Going through high school, going through junior high, um, especially in a Republican um, conservative area of Texas, San Antonio, Texas, and being Hispanic, um, I was already put um, a peg down. So I had proved myself and being effeminate just did not help. So yes, I was taunted constantly. I would uh, think that every time I thought about guys or I thought about having sex with guys that uh, God would be cursing me and I'd have a bad day that day or you know that I would um, have bad luck and uh, so I would try really hard not to think about it so I would have to make sure I'd have a good day. For me like the best way for me to cope with it was just like let it roll off my shoulders. I wasn't the kind of person that was gonna like let that stuff like get bottled up inside and like really affect me. As I got older I learned that your real friends and people that care about you don't care about your sexuality. And I learned that short people felt different for being short, and fat people felt different for being fat, and we all have a reason we feel different. The truth of the matter is we're all exactly the same with a few minor adjustments around the edges. And then things really changed for me when I started college. I moved away. I decided to kind of go on my own journey and decide to be who I wanted to be. After high school, I decided to get out of uh, the small town I grew up in. And then I moved to Portland, which is full of queer people and allies, and there are a lot of resources here. I met a group of people, gay, straight, bi, a little bit of everything. I met other gay people and realized that they were normal and they were 
just like me and they weren't strange or sinister or scary. I got to have a girlfriend and fall in love and even break up, but that was okay because I got to experience it and I never would have if I had stayed home. For the first time in my life when I arrived here, I was no longer that gay guy that everybody made fun of. I was just Austin. I really felt like I was really inspired and really fully educated in a way that I never got a chance to be educated in high school. In this world, there are a million different places to live. There's billions of people to meet. We all need to make it bright and beautiful and different for it to be interesting and fun. Eventually, one day, you'll be strong enough to say, I'm gay. I came here gay, I'm gonna leave here gay, and I couldn't be happier. I'm so stoked that I'm gay, and I'm like living in Seattle, and I've done everything that I've done. My sexuality is not all of what I am. I'm a person. When I stopped believing that I was a, I was no good, that I was not worth, you know, anything, that I was not uh, the same as everybody else. When I stopped believing that, it's when things started to change. I wasn't someone who was going to be put down and made to run away. Um, I was going to be there, I was going to make friends with other people, and I was going to have my own community. And that's what you have to do sometimes, is just um, turn the other cheek. I think the most important thing I could say is that you need to find the strength within to protect yourself and to care for yourself and to love yourself as you are. There is nothing wrong with being gay. There's lots of awesome, amazing, random, weird people out there, and you're not alone. Things are always changing, and people are always changing, and your, the community is always changing. You will find your friends, and with friends comes power. Just think about all the stuff that you're going to be able to do if you just focus on yourself and making yourself an awesome individual. Always be yourself. Even if you're not sure what that is, go find out what that is for you, what makes you happy, what makes you smile. Wear what you want to wear. Date who you want to date hang out with who you find interesting. When you graduate from high school, the world changes. You realize that there's a much bigger world out there that you don't see when you're in school. And just hang in there and, uh, you know, come out at your own pace. You have to remember that it's only temporary and that you will move through it and that new exciting things will come. And just because you kind of only know these one things for now, it definitely gets better. It moves on to bigger, better things. You're a kid and you have to do so much more than a lot of other kids do, recognizing that you want to do something so simple as kiss another boy. <laughs> None of it matters in the end. What matters in the end is, do people love you? Do you love back? And that's it.